All right, welcome. In this video, we're gonna open up MATLAB and go through how to set up some of the settings and preferences. So I go down to my search bar, type in MATLAB. Uh, there we go. Click on that top match right there. MATLAB opens up. Now it does say that I'm using the uh, trial version right here. Before we go any further, let's see how to purchase the full version of MATLAB. All right, to do that, I'm gonna to go to my browser, open it up. I'm going to need to log into my MATLAB account. So let's go to MATLAB right here. The MathWorks website is still the relevant website. Now I'm actually already still signed in up here. You can see my NH for Neil Holtschulte. But if you're not signed in, you can still click up here to sign in. I'm gonna to go to my account and I'm gonna click on the uh, buy icon, the uh, shopping cart right here. Now you need to select what's appropriate for you. If you're a student, you should select student right here. Most of the folks that I'm gonna be directing to this video are gonna be clicking on select student. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, now I'm gonna scroll down here past all of these different options. Yes, until you see MATLAB and Simulink student suite right there, $99. That is going to get you everything that you need for the stuff that I'm going to cover in this video series. Probably 90% of what I'm going to cover, all you need is this $49 version right here. So you can get rid of, certainly get rid of all these options. In fact, I'm surprised that they're automatically checked by default. I wonder if there's a way to uncheck them all. You gotta be kidding me. There's gotta be a way to uncheck these. I'm shocked and disappointed by that. But anyway, I'm just not actually gonna go through with it. Here's the point. $99 version gets you everything you need for the stuff I'm gonna cover in this video series, the stuff that I do cover in my class that I teach. $49 version is gonna get you through most of what you need and you can get through the rest of it using the virtual desktop if you're one of my students. If you're not one of my students, welcome. Thank you for you know looking at these videos. Hopefully they help you as well. But this is gonna get you the vast majority of what you need. Simulink in particular, which is not included with the $49 version. Uh, what I teach that that does is it'll basically do algebraic manipulations of equations for you. So if you have an equation of one or more variables, you can ask it to solve for a particular variable. You can perform substitutions. You can factor. You can find roots, things like that. Or rather, MATLAB will do those things for you. And that's all I use it for. Everything else, uh, the $49 version is great. That's all you need. So anyway, go through and mark the check boxes of what you need and uncheck everything else. I'm shocked and appalled that these are all checked by default because I would have to go through and uncheck them all, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And then from there, you would just click add to cart uh, and then you would go through and you would make your purchase. And at some point you would be given a license number that you could enter in MATLAB to unlock the full non-trial version. So back to MATLAB. In this video, I'm gonna go through how to change the uh, settings and preferences and organization of our MATLAB windows. So in the center window right here, we have the command window and we can type in various commands. For example, X equals seven and just hit enter. My first problem is this is in teeny tiny font. I wanna make my text also large so it's easy to read. So what I need to do is I need to go to preferences right here and then fonts, and then currently my font size is set to 10, and that's not what I want. I want it to be something much, much larger. Let's see how big 36 is. You know what, for the videos, that'll be great. That's really big, but I think that's good. And I actually also like to make it in bold, because I think it's even easier to read. So I'm gonna click apply, and then okay. Ah, and now we can see things are already much larger. There's x equals seven, there's my results, cool. I am not aware of how to make the font size in the workspace or in these other sub windows larger, or the uh, menus along the top. There might be a way to do that under preferences somewhere, but I, I guess I've just not investigated that before. All right, now the next thing is, most of the work that I'm gonna be showing you is gonna be done inside of a script, not inside of the command window. As I showed here, you can type in a bunch of commands on the command window, hit enter, and they'll be run, right? I created this variable named x, I gave it the value of seven. You can even see in the workspace, there's a variable named x with a value of seven right there, but I'm gonna do most of my work in the script. So if I go to the far upper left, there's a new script button, I'm gonna click that. It added this new window in the middle, the editor, and there's an empty script here. The command window was shrunk to the bottom third or quarter of the screen right there, and all the other windows stayed the same. This is not the arrangement that I like to use, it's not the arrangement that I'll be using in my videos. I like to have things laid out with a vertical orientation so I would like the command window moved over here. 
To do that, I'm going to click down on the command window and then click and drag the blue bar along the top here that says command window. Click and drag it so you can see there's different sort of locations that if I dropped it to, it would appear at that location. I'm going to go to this one right here. So it's to the right of my editor window. It's a very narrow area where I can move my mouse to position it there. This can be tricky, but it's okay if you mess it up. You can always drag and drop it to a different location. So I drop it. Great, now they're side by side. My workspace is less important. I would like that to take up less space. So I'm gonna click on the workspace and then click and drag down, down, down to the bottom left down here. Now again, it's subtle. The difference between it taking over the left third of the window or being the bottom half of the left third is a very subtle movement of my mouse. So be careful, or even taking the whole bottom of the screen, like it's all over the place. It's a very finicky interface, but I'm gonna drop it down here in the bottom left. Great, this is what I want. I'm actually gonna get rid of details. I'm just gonna shrink that down with this little down arrow button right there. Great, I got my current folder in the upper left, workspace, bottom left, editor taking up a lot of the middle of the screen. In fact, let's even give it a little bit more. And my command window on the far right side. My editor itself, I can start clicking it. I can start typing in commands. CLC, clear, format short G, format compact. These two commands are basically resetting everything, giving me a clean slate to work from. And then these are formatting commands. These are just my preferences for the basic format I'm gonna use. I'm gonna talk more about those in another video. But the last thing I wanna do is X equals seven, and then I wanna run this. I'm gonna encourage you to use shortcuts. They will save you time in the long run, and they're good to learn. To run code in the editor, control enter if you're on a Windows machine. And it's either control enter or the Mac command key enter for a Mac. All right, and it just ran my code. The command window changed subtly because CLC erases what was previously on the command window, and the formatting is slightly different. Compact means basically single spaced instead of double spaced. And then it did x equals seven and showed me that result. Fantastic, that's what I wanted to show you. Suppose you accidentally lose a window. So let me grab the command window here and let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna drag it up here and pop it out, right? And now it's like popped out separate from MATLAB. Huh, how do I put it back if I don't like this? Maybe you like this, you can use it in this format and then you can arrange it wherever you like and it's just in a separate window. If I wanna put it back, what do I do? I go up to this little circle with a triangle inside it, inside the command window, and I click, and I there's these options down here. I go to dock. Dock is gonna reattach it to the rest of MATLAB. Right, and there it is. It's popped back over here. Now, other things can go wrong. So I'm gonna drag and pop it out again, and then I'm gonna hit the X. Oh, it just actually redocks it again. I didn't realize it was gonna do that, that's funny. Okay, so if you hit the X, it actually also just docks it back over here. Well, I know I can close the editor. So if I close the editor here with that X, I'm not gonna save changes for now. The editor's gone. Now the editor is easy to get back because I just clicked new script up here and it reappears with a new script. And we'll talk about saving files and whatnot in a future video. How about current folder? Suppose I close the current folder. Suppose I close the workspace. Ah, what now I've lost those windows. What if I wanna get them back? How do I do that? What you wanna do is with these tabs along the top, go to home, go to layout, and you can see what's being shown. Current folder, workspace, panel titles, tool strip, and so on. Current folder and workspace are both hidden. They don't have a checkbox. So this is how we can get them back. Again, home, layout, current folder, and then workspace. Now the format, the, the layout is not what I want. So I need to rearrange it. I'm gonna grab current folder, drag it to the left and top. Nope, apparently, is there no way to, huh, that's frustrating. Well, I'm gonna grab it, drag it to the bottom. I would like these to swap though. Is there a way to swap them? There we go. So you just drag it to whatever position you want it to be in uh, until it, it shows up as that sort of blue ghostly outline. Oh, excuse me, I must have grabbed the wrong thing there. Well, that's awkward. Hmm, I don't actually know what I did there. I would really like to undo it though. Well, I just grabbed and dragged in the upper left corner there until it got back to the formatting that I wanted. You know, using new software, it can always be a little bit of a struggle. 
What I was trying to say before was, if you grab that top blue bar there, you can see these sort of ghostly blue outlines as to where, when you drop with the mouse, so I'm just doing drag and drop, where the window panel will be located. And so you can arrange it as you like. All right, again, I wanna keep these videos short. That'll be all for this one. In the next video, we'll actually start running some MATLAB code. We'll save our MATLAB files uh, and all that jazz.